Hello everyone, this is Grade 6, Module 4, Lesson 10, Problem Set. So, today we're going to be looking at uh, expanded form and standard form for the first part. So, I'll start off with doing a few from each. Number 1 says, rewrite the expression in standard form. And what standard form means is using the fewest number of symbols and characters as possible. So, I'll take a look at A first. And it says 5 times y. The way that I could best write that is just 5y. Because I know if there's a, a number next to a variable with no sign shown, that's always going to mean multiplication. And then I'll take a look at c. And for this one, I want to combine all like terms. Meaning, if I have numbers there, I'm going to put all the numbers together. And if I have letters, I'm going to put all the letters together. So let's start with the numbers. I have 5 times 2 times 2. So I know 5 times 2 is 10. And then 10 times 2 is 20. So when I put my numbers together, I get 20. Now I have y times z. And since I don't know what those numbers stand for, I'm not going to make something up. I'm just going to leave it as y, z. And you'll notice that I didn't put multiplication signs between them because I know that when there's a number next to a letter and there's no sign, it's multiplication. Just like when I know if there's two letters next to each other without a sign, it means multiplication. So I'm not going to put those multiplication signs in, in standard form, because I want to get it as few characters as possible and symbols. So let's take a look at 2. Write the following expressions in expanded form, meaning pulling them apart and adding some stuff into it. So again, I'll do A and C. So I'll start with A. 3G, I know that that means 3 times G. And notice that I'm using the dot that's halfway up. Um, it's not at the bottom of the number because that can be confused with a decimal point, but 3 dot g, because I don't want to use an x in there, the multiplication sign, because that's very similar to a variable. So that's my expanded form for that first one. Now let's take a look at c, because this we could have a few different answers. I can separate out the numbers to 20, and then I'll multiply that by the first letter, which is y, and I know that that's also times z. So notice I put my multiplication symbols in between and I stretched it out. So I have my numbers and then each letter separately. Now I could switch this up even more and I could get it down to uh, prime factorization, meaning the factors, the prime factors that make that up. So 20, if I look up above, it's the same ones as up here. This actually was written right here in expanded form. So I could also write it as 5 times 2 times 2 because I know that those multiplied together are going to give me 20 and they can't be broken down any further because they, they are now prime numbers, meaning they have one, uh, two factors, one and itself. And then I can also separate out my letters of y and z. So either one of these is good, depending on how far down you want to take the number. Now the last set, 3, find the product. So I'm going to do 5D times 7G. When I multiply, and I know this is all multiplication, 5 times D times 7 times G. So if I write this out, and I'm doing this the long way, And you might not need to. Now that I got them like this, I can shuffle these numbers. Because the commutative property of multiplication tells me the order in which I multiply all of these isn't going to change the answer. I'm going to move the 7 and the D so I have my numbers next to each other and my letters next to each other. So now I can actually multiply this. 5 times 7 is 35. And D times G is DG. So 35 DG. 
again, I can't multiply uh, D and G together to get myself a value because we don't know the values of those variables. So we just push them together without um, a multiplication sign because two letters next to each other mean multiplication if there's no sign. And so what I'm really doing for this is I'm just taking the two numbers or the numbers and multiplying them together and I put the letters next to each other. So I'll do part B on this one just to show you and I'm not going to space them all out but I think it's a great way to show how the commutative property works. So again, I could just combine my numbers 12 times 3 is 36 and then a times B times C times D can just be shown as A, B, C, D. That's grade 6, module 4, lesson 10, problem set. Thanks.